Hey everyone, I am bringing class to you today from my garage. But Mr. Martin, you say, why are you in your garage and not someplace like your living room? Well, very good question. Today I'm going to go over a little bit about the physics of musical instruments, um, starting with the guitar. And my daughter, uh, even though she really likes this guitar, is currently asleep, so I don't want to wake her up. So I set up this whole big thing outside, and I thought, oh, that'll be nice. There'll be greenery around me. It'll be a beautiful view. And no, because it's a windy day, and the iPad kept falling over. So now the iPad's up on my car. I'm sitting right next to my garage door. <laughs> this is schooling in America today. So let's do this thing. <laughs> um, so with the guitar, there are six different strings, and each string has a different thickness. Now, the thicker strings have a larger mass per unit length, or linear mass density. Um, basically, the pitch you hear on any musical instrument is related to the frequency. So the higher the pitch, the higher the frequency measured in hertz. So how do you get a higher frequency? A couple of different ways using the equation v equals lambda f, that's velocity equals wavelength times frequency, uh, I could keep the same velocity of the wave and decrease the wavelength. Or I could keep the same wavelength and increase the wave speed. Now these thicker strings, since they have a bigger linear mass density, they're going to have a smaller velocity for any given wave compared to the thinner strings with a smaller linear mass density. When you hear a string vibrate, typically what you're hearing is the first harmonic. Now, a stringed instrument like a guitar is closed at both ends, so that means there's a node there rather than an anti-node. So down here it's held tight, up here it's held tight, which means a standing wave has to fit on this length of string. Usually, you're going to be hearing the standing wave of the first harmonic, which means this is a note, this is a note, and you've got a single antinode in the middle as the string vibrates back and forth. As the string vibrates, it causes the wood in the guitar to vibrate as well. Guitars have these large cavernous bodies because that gets the air inside the cavernous body vibrating at that frequency too. And that amplifies the entire sound. Once it resonates, it uh, creates a wave of a bigger amplitude, and that's why you can actually hear it. If you've ever taken just a string and plucked it, you might be able to hear it if you're like a couple of centimeters away from it. But with this big body of the guitar, it amplifies that sound out so that even the microphone of the iPad can hear it right now. Hopefully, because otherwise I'm going to have to re-record this whole video later if I realize you cannot hear a thing. So that'll be fun. Um, yeah, all along the fret. So those are the two different ways of, of changing the frequency. Either get the wave speed moving at a different speed or get the wavelength a different length. The wave speed is different for each of these strings because the linear mass density is different. The other thing I can do is change the wavelength. If I change the effective length of vibration of one of these strings, say I start here on an open string, or then I hold down on this fret and play it again, it's a higher pitch. That's because on guitars, there are these little, yeah, let me get around to make sure you can see that. Uh, there we go. There are these little um, lips almost, these little bumps, uh, and these bumps, are what the string are held down on. So when I hold down the string on this fret, it's actually being clamped right here, which makes guitar playing kind of nice because I can hold my thumb down anywhere along that fret and get the same note out of it. But if I move to a different fret, it's clamped at a different location and I get a different note out of that. It's a lot easier than, let's say, violin players who 
do not have these little ridges and therefore the string ends wherever their fingers are. Guitars are so much more forgiving than violins are. Um, but anyway, so I've held it down to this little ridge and now I've changed the string length from here to here. In the first harmonic, when you go from node to an anti-node in the middle, back to a node on the other end, it fits half of a wavelength on there, a quarter between the first node and anti-node, and then another quarter between the anti-node and node. So anytime I play one of these strings, the wavelength of the vibration is actually twice the length of this string. And by changing that length, by shortening the wavelength, keeping the same wave speed, I'm increasing the frequency because V equals lambda F. The other factor that comes into play is the tension. So since this is a string instrument, it follows that equation of velocity equals square root of tension divided by linear mass density. So the higher the tension, and that's what these little tuning pegs do, I just crank it and it tightens or loosens the string. If I tighten the string, then it goes up. The pitch goes up. Higher tension, higher velocity, higher velocity, higher frequency. Lower tension, lower velocity, lower frequency, and it works on all the strings. And I actually have this really cool funky tuner right here that doesn't uh, have a little microphone on it. All it does is have a vibration sensor here. I mentioned the whole guitar vibrates at the same frequency of that string. So when I play it, it'll pick up its vibration and it knows what the vibration should be in Hertz of the nearest note. And it tells me where I am relative to that ideal vibration, tells me whether I need to tighten or loosen to get it to that exact right pitch. Pretty cool. When a guitar plays, uh, the strings vibrate at their certain frequency based on those equations I talked about earlier, and then it vibrates the air at the same frequency. Now the air doesn't have the same wave speed, but it has the same frequency. And once that air is vibrating, that's what travels out and smacks you in the ear. All that sound waves are, are a vibration of air particles, and that's it. And it goes back to pressure, which we talked about in the fall semester. Uh, when the air particles all collect together, that's a tight spot called a compression. Where they're spread out, that's a loose spot called a rarefaction. And so it'll go from high pressure, from compression, out to rarefaction, and then it'll create another compression up here, out to another rarefaction, and so it'll vibrate like this, a longitudinal wave, until it vibrates your eardrum at the same frequency, which creates electrical impulses, and you kind of sense the sound, which is pretty cool. Um, not all instruments work this way. A lot of instruments work by blowing air into some sort of a chamber. So a trumpet, for example, I was going to show you at the school, but I'm not at the school, and, um, and you're not either. And I left my trumpet there. But um, you just sort of buzz into a mouthpiece. It fills this chamber with vibrating air, and that does travel at the speed of sound. Anytime the air is the thing that's vibrating, the velocity is the speed of sound. And that speed of sound can change with temperature, so that's why instruments can get out of tune in hot versus cold days. It also changes with humidity, um, so that's why you've got to have these tuning slides and you need to retune almost every time you play an instrument. Um, it's all just physics, which is pretty cool. Uh, so string instruments, the string vibrates at a lower speed usually, um, but then it causes air to vibrate at that frequency. With wind instruments or brass, it's already the air that's vibrating. Um, yeah. I mentioned on a string, it's usually the first time on harmonic. With something like a trumpet, you can fit more harmonics in. It's why you can get different notes while keeping the same fingering. You can play several different notes with all open valves. Um, because you're fitting different harmonic levels in there, those will have different wavelengths. The more wavelengths you're fitting in, the smaller the wavelength value and the bigger the frequency. Um, a 
That's why tightening your lips raises the note, uh, which is also pretty cool. So I'm going to get this bad boy tuned up, uh, and then I'll play you all a little bitty to close out this week's lesson. Oh, before I forget, this is a capo. If you've ever played guitar, you've probably used one. You clamp it down so that all the strings are stuck onto a close-up ridge rather than going all the way to the end of the guitar. And that allows you to raise the entire key. So I could play a little ditty just open. But if I didn't like that, if I wanted to change the key a little bit, I could put this, well, let's say on the third fret, and then play it as if this were the top of the guitar and all the notes are a little bit higher. Cool. Okay. I promise you people have saw the whole depth. So I want to dedicate this song to people who have been living primarily on uh, dry land for most of their life. Maybe taking a dip in the water now and then, but always coming home to dryness. Look at this stuff, isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? Wouldn't you think I'm the girl, the girl who has everything? Look at this trove, treasures untold. How many wonders can one cavern hold? Looking around here, you think, She's got everything. Well, I've got gadgets and gizmos aplenty. I've got who's it's and what's it's galore. You want thingamabobs? I got 20. But who cares? No big deal. I want more. I want to be where the people are, but six feet away. I want to see, want to see them dancing, walking around on those, what do you call them again? <laughs> oh, feet. Flipping your fins, you don't get too far. Legs are required for jumping, dancing. But like that middle school kind of dance, where everyone's six feet apart anyway, and they're just sort of awkwardly dancing. That's the kind of dance that we can do right now. Flatten the curve. Strolling along down a, what's the word again? Street. Up where they walk, up where they run, up where they stay all day in the sun. Wandering free. Wish I could be part of that world. Have a good week, everybody.